Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Ideas Vision channel feature on introducing the Ensenso S. My name is Martin Hennemann, and I'm going to present to you now our new compact industrial 3D camera. 3D machine vision has now established itself as a mainstream automation technology. In particular, in combination with robotics, it is used worldwide for tasks like automated bin picking, um, pick and place, including also some assembly operations, or in logistics for depalletizing, so handling and storing goods and deliveries. Besides the industrial use cases that we have already looked at in our vision channel features, um, the 3D vision um, advances also feed lively research and development efforts in, also in scientific institutes. So one main area of development is uh, moving and transporting goods. So here you can see an example of an automated vehicle that is used to store or retrieve goods automatically can be partly automated, can be used fully automated. Then I've already talked about in another feature on the interaction with humans. So here we can see a setup from three years ago where actually uh, artificial intelligence is at play already in combination with 3D vision to have a robot interact with a human, in this case, be a challenging player for a Scrabble game. And also, um, in again here in industrial setup, um, we can see that there are robots constructed to do all kinds of collaboration or helping assisting the humans can be quite some quite daring from time to time as we can see here in this in this shot. So overall, 3D vision is a lively area of research also, and one major drive is to give robots, visual sense in order to have them give them some smart behavior to have them react adaptively to their environment. So into this uh, area, we now introduce a new camera in our Ensenso portfolio. So far, the Ensenso 3D cameras are active stereo 3D cameras and um, they are versatile, used for many applications, as I've just uh, shown you examples from. They are flexible for small volumes, for large volumes, for on-arm mounting, for stationary mounting. And they are used in industrial and research setups worldwide. Now, with the Ensenso S, we introduce a new member of the Ensenso cameras and we provide a new entry point to accurate 3D imaging at a lower price point. Um, still, the Ensenso S comes with industry-grade design and interfaces, and we make this possible by introducing a new 3D sensing technology. We call that the 3D laser pattern triangulation. I would like to explain to you now a bit more in detail what this new technology is about. So, um, laser pattern triangulation is a, comes from the principle of structured light, and actually, this principle was introduced into your living rooms a decade ago by a small company called Microsoft in the Kinect first generation. And it was meant to enable you to steer your computer or actually your gaming console without, with hands-free, without using a, a controller. So to interact with your, um, with your PC. Now with the Ensenso S, this principle is introduced with some innovation innovative solutions for industrial purposes also. Let's look at this uh, schematic here on top. In this illustration, you can see the Ensenso S. And the first point here is that it has an invisible infrared laser that creates a laser dot pattern projecting this into the scene. In this case, we look at the scene where there is a Euro palette with a stack of uh, boxes on it. The second step is that the single camera inside the Ensenso S images that scene and so takes a picture of where these laser dots are, where the light of these laser dots are scattered back into the system. Then there comes the intelligence. So for the Ensenso S, a neural network is then identifying the laser points individually. And once it has given each laser point an ID, 
then we can again use the principle of triangulation to get distance values for each of the laser points. Now I want to explain a bit more in detail what the intelligence here does. And uh, in this slide, I'm using an analogy to astronomy. Let's look at an image that the Ensenso S camera will take. So this is one of the, let's say, raw images. And in this image, you can see about 90,000 laser dots being reflected back into the camera here. However, you can barely make out individual dots. Let me give you this analogy. This is about looking at a starry sky at night without clouds. And now about point identification. What is the, um, the smartness here about? Let's look at cutouts. Um, so here, zooming in, you can now recognize individuals of these laser dots. So we're looking at a local point neighborhood. And the question we need to answer for point identification is, of course, which point is this, which laser dot is this, or in my analogy, which star is this? So in this case, the central star, the name of the central star is searched for. How is it solved? Well, there is an artificial intelligence at play here. So there's a neural network that has learned all these point neighborhoods in the projector pattern. So we ask, we give the neural network this local point neighborhood and ask it, can you look at this point neighborhood and tell us which star is the central one or which laser dot, which ID has, which, which ID the central laser dot has. So this is looking up stellar constellations. So the neural network has been trained for all kinds of variations in this reference pattern that can occur in real scenes. So this is like being trained for constellations as they would appear anyway, anywhere on the sky. And then, for example, in my analogy, it will recognize a shape here, in this case, the constellation Lyra. And from this, it can tell that this star must be Vega. So it will recognize a kind of constellation of laser dots and then can give an, central, an ID, a point ID to the central dot. And this is made dot by dot. And once we have established the point ID, then by using the triangulation, we can actually determine the distance where this light has been scattered back to the camera. In practice, the 25 light years to Vega is out of reach for the Ensenso S. It reaches approximately to three meters and a bit more. So let's look at this triangulation once more. Um, I have another illustration here. So triangulation comes, of course, from triangle. Here we see the triangle between projector, camera, and um, scattering of the laser dot. And from the perspective of the laser, it sends out the reference pattern in a, in a way that we know. So this is calibrated. It is reflected back or scattered back from different distances into the camera. So laser perspective gives us a regular or known pattern distribution of points. And from the viewpoint of the camera, we can see that some of these points are displaced versus the reference because they are scattered back from a foreground object in this case. So, and this way, this displacement is a measure of the distance of this foreground object versus the background object. So this is the artificial intelligence at play with the Ensenso S. Now let's take a look at the camera itself. So this technology comes in this neat little package we have industrial housing. From the front, you can see here the camera. You can see the laser and its diffraction element producing the point pattern. We have IP6567 protection, so it can be used for rough environments. And of course, on the back side, we have industrial connectors. So we have for the data transmission, we have a GIGA port, it's M12. We have power and I.O. via the M8 port. And we have a rectangular mounting pattern. Now, with the Ensenso S, there comes a comprehensive integration into our Ensenso SDK. So in this slide, I'm showing you a few of the features that you can already use from the start with the Ensenso S. So the important point is flexible calibration functions for setting up a workspace environment, for mounting it on a robot or versus a robot, and calibrating it, and 
also setting up multi-camera systems to bring in color information or other kind of 3D information, for instance. Um, with the SDK, there come rendering, simulation and debugging features right from the get-go. So here we can um, profit from the experience with the author and sensor cameras over the last years in the industrial applications. We have the API structure available in programming interfaces. So as before, C, C++, .NET language can be used. And in particular, also um, languages that uh, serve very well for rapid prototyping, namely the Halkin interface, the Python wrapper, or also the ROS nodes that you can use to implement the Ensenso on, um, for example, on new kind of robots developed for new service tasks. So um, now let's look at what the data of the Ensenso S can give us. So I'm going to a part of data quality comparison here. We uh, use the Ensenso S to take data as I've just introduced, um, it uses laser pattern triangulation, working with about 90,000 laser dots and has a view field of about 60 by 50 degrees. So here we compare this with a low cost active stereo camera unit with an industrial housing though. It has about one megapixel doing active stereo and a bit larger field of view for this camera. And then we also compare with a time of flight setup. So if you wonder what time of flight is, um, you can have a look at the previous Vision Channel features on 3D technology. So in this case, an evaluation kit was used that provides VGA resolution and uh, um, also a slightly larger field of view, but almost the same. So now I'm going to walk you through slides filled with this of the cameras. Let's start with the first one. So this is a setup that goes into some detail. We have here a medium-sized bin that includes some cartons that are shrink-wrapped. So there's plastic sheet cover around it. And I display this in the upper left. Then we have a reference view from our Ensenso stereo camera, the N30, um, showing you kind of a reference uh, point cloud, how that would look like, and introducing you to the color pattern that I'm using here. So the bottom is always the red color and top will be dark blue. Now, the Ensenso S data. You can already see that here compared to our setups, our stereo setups, we have fewer points, but you still recognize the shape of the box and the cartons very well. Um, we compare this to the low cost stereo setup and to the time of flight step setup. There is one detail here that you have to ignore. For the time of flight data, uh, one of the cards is slightly displaced. That's not a problem of the system, of course, but of the setup of the box. Now, from the camera's perspectives, this box is recognizable, I think, in all data sets. However, already for the low-cost stereo setup, you can see that the, the um, individual cartons are not so distinguishable anymore. Let's have a side look on this data set. You can see on the left-hand side, the Ensenso S produces the geometry, the overall geometry of the bin and also the cartons inside quite well. You can recognize individual surfaces also from the side view. For the low-cost stereo setup, this is not so well. So here you already see that the surfaces are basically dominated by some systematic um, waviness. And for time of flight in particular, also some extrapolation artifacts turn up. So here I visualize a little bit um, the planar box rim that is vis visible very well in the Ensenso S data, but not so easily in the other data sets. And around the rim of the box, extrapolation artifacts in particular for the time of flight setup. Moving on to uh, the second scene, let's, let's give this a statement of for the Ensenso S, it produces fewer points uh, but better accuracy of where the points should lie. In the second setup, um, we have uh, a number of care products in usually plastic bottles, but also um, some metal cap inside here, and glass. Um, again, a reference point cloud from our stereo setup. Um, 
And here again, the data from the Ensenso S comparing to our N series, you can still see that the individual uh, surfaces, caps of the, of the items in here, you can recognize them. The sampling in points is again lower. And you can also make out that the box rim here is about at the resolution limit of the Ensenso S. So that's about uh, 15 millimeters in extent. And this would be approximately uh, the limit for resolution at between one and one and a half meter distance for the Ensenso S. So the other point clouds from this, uh, let's say competing technologies, so low cost stereo again and time of flight. Noticeable for time of flight, the metal cap here produces some problems. So this is mit missing, um, already showing us that reflections from shiny surfaces are um, a challenge for this kind of technology. Again, I will show you now a side view for this point cloud. So here we see the geometry of the bin, though the rim is not reconstructed fully by the Ensenso S, it is still there where it should be. Whereas for the other sensors, it's actually quite hard to make out where the box ends in detail. And in particular, also for time of flight, we start to see a strong artifact um, of inclined uh, surfaces for the box front, for example, here. In this setup, um, I will also now show you a quantitative analysis. So we look at the planar surface. In this case, it's just a piece of carton. And in the reference point cloud, we get to a noise of about one millimeter. Um, for the Ensenso S, it's about 1.7. So you see that it's not far away from our stereo setups in this case. Um, for the other systems and setups, we get um, quite more noisy um, results here. And in the low cost stereo setup, it is uh, dominated by systematics as you can maybe make out in the central point cloud on the bottom here. Now the last challenge, um, we have is uh, metal. So here is a bin of metal objects, mostly ring structures. Again, the three um, point clouds from camera perspective here. And here I would just like to show you one cutout. So the right hand side of the, of the bin here where mostly ring structures are in. And um, here we can see this uh, point cloud illustrated for each of the three set setups. Um, you can see that the triangulation method, so the Ensenso S and the low-cost stereo um, still produce these metal shapes to some degree. However, the time of flight here with the uh, reflecting surfaces does not produce it so clearly. And this is more obvious uh, when we, let's say, uh, take a look around of these point clouds and notice that the, the ring structure is not very well preserved here, whereas for the Ensenso S, you can still make it out quite clearly. Coming to the conclusion here, so uh, comparing the Ensenso S with this uh, technology with these technologies means uh, the Ensenso S delivers in general fewer points, better accuracy. So that is um, accurate 3D geometry for large and small scales. We have high quality, low noise data for about details of about centimeter sizes, and we have a low artifact level in particular compared with these technologies. So if you want to have detailed specifications for the Ensenso S, that's straightforward. Just visit our Ensenso camera selector on the IDS webpage, and there the Ensenso S is included, and you can look up the data sheet and the individual numbers over distance. Now, let's have a look at the Ensenso S in operation. So now we're looking at the Ensenso S in operation. So here we see a rendering of the three point cloud of the Ensenso S, and we set up a simple scene here with the Euro palette. You can see the geometry of the Euro palette, then a bin on top of it, and also some small cartoons. We have a quick view on the laser dot pattern image. You can see uh, the scattered light from the laser. And now we change the scene a little bit by manually putting some more cartoons inside the bin. You can see the top right that the camera is running now with CPU based processing at about eight point clouds per second. Now we'll have another view on the 
dot pattern image and on the geometry once more pointing out that actually the patterns, the palette structure is reconstructed very well. And we'll also have a look zoomed in on the individual small cartons and packages that um, we use here and show that we indeed have placed rectangular objects into our scene, which the camera reconstructs. This concludes our quick look into the Ensenso S data and the Ensenso S in operation. Now let me point out a few more details on the Ensenso S. So, after this demonstration, I would like now to walk you through a few Ensenso usage scenarios. So, we are thinking about logistics automation as we have already hinted at. So, for example, we can imagine very well that uh, the Ensenso S is useful for handling pallets and also monitoring areas, like in this case, for storage units. Um, a second illustration here shows you that uh, for the transport and movement, the Ensenso S can potentially detect obstacles that are in the way of transport vehicles that I've also shown in the beginning already. Um, more usage scenarios for the Ensenso S, we go to the scale of package handling. So here, for, a, for example, an Ensenso S setup illustrated over a belt, a conveyor belt producing or shifting uh, packages, and here a virtual point cloud um, from packets in movement. And this is a challenging scenario because um, all kinds of goods can be um, placed on such conveyor belts for handling. Then in combination with robots, as we have discussed already, um, typically depalletizing uh, applications as illustrated here again. And um, if we look in more detail, for example, object recognition tasks where particular movements, particular objects need to be checked, uh, controlled, and recognized. And concluding the scenarios, um, there are new application areas, for example, in, in horticulture, where robots can tend to plants, monitor them, survey them, and also pick fruits, for example. And of course, in combination with robotics, again, there are there's a rapidly developing field of automated assistants collaborating for individual tasks that humans uh, can do easily so far, or service humans, of course, by picking, for example, grocery from the store automatically on demand. Now, with these ideas, let's wrap up here. So the Ensenso S provides our new entry point to accurate 3D imaging. Let's have a quick overview again of what is in the box for you. So the Ensenso S is a new cost-efficient 3D camera. It's, a, um, it's versatile, so useful for many application areas. It's price efficient. Um, it brings 3D vision into some applications that have not used it before. We have inside an innovation AI-powered laser triangulation algorithm um, that produces point clouds with accurate 3D geometry. In particular, comparison with competing 3D technologies, we have a low artifact level in these point clouds. We provide industry-grade interfaces and, of course, robustness and comprehensive SDK features. And with this, I hope that you will have a lot of fun with the new Ensenso S. Thank you.